All right, guys, sorry for the late update on the All-Star Game event. Uh, I was in Montreal at the Montreal Canadiens LAN event yesterday, so I was traveling all day yesterday and today, obviously. Uh, so let's go over all of the event details. It works a lot like last year, and it was one of the best events last year. Um, just for anyone that doesn't know, I'm going to go over it real quick. Two attributes will boost to 99 for each skills competition winner. I'll have some more info on that throughout the video. Uh, plus one for every goal scored in the All-Star game. This is the round robin that they play early on with a three-on-three -three or on the actual All-Star game day. Any of the goals that are scored by the player, everything goes goes up by one and then plus two for the goalies on the final winning team so there's two goalies on every team obviously they will get boosted plus two overall the all-star game mvp will boost to 95 overall and all players from the winning team will be awarded an additional team synergy so it can create um some pretty interesting cards last year if i remember correctly I think Crosby got the MVP or was the highest upgrade. And I think he only got upgraded to 94, 95. So keep in mind with these cards, guys, is that more than likely, unless there's one super outlier that maybe wins a skills competition and then blows up for like seven goals in the All-Star game, you're really not going to have any of these cards at the end of the game other than maybe a goaltender. Uh, and we're going to go over that in a little bit. But there are some interesting ones that you could probably get some value out of because, again, if you buy them now, you're you know you're basically hedging your bet that they might win a skills competition or do really well in the event, and then in which you can sell them for more money if you are someone who likes to play the long game. But if you want to take a look at who I think is going to do well and all of my uh, whatnot uh, info on the event, let's go and go over all of the cards. This is going to be a long video, guys. So if you want to skip through it, that's fine. If you're looking for a particular player, but basically what we're going to do is just start at the end. And we're going to go all the way through the 44 guys. And I'm going to try to do as quick as possible for the ones that I just don't think anything of. So we'll start with the uh, Shea Weber. He's huge. He His speed is a little slow compared to the defensemen, but right defensemen are pretty rare at the end game still. He more than likely will be in the hardest shot competition. Last year, John Carlson won it, surprisingly, because I thought Seth Jones would. Um, but I'm going to assume that he's going to be in the hardest shot competition, so he will have a shot at more than likely... If it's shot power that goes up, which it might, uh, and not shot accuracy as well. If it's strength, I believe last year it was shot power, strength, and it might have been accuracy. But since it's only two uh, stats, I'm not too sure. Um, if it is only shot power, we don't know yet. That kind of sucks because it's only going to go up just a little bit. But, uh, you know, defensemen can score in the actual game uh, just because of the, the nature of the three-on-three. -three. But overall, this card isn't terrible to begin with because he's six foot four, two thirty on the right side. It's a very, very good card as it is. So uh, he's not a bad investment, but uh, we have to wait for more details on what two stats will actually boost the 99 in that case. Moving on to Andre Vasilevsky. This would be a hard pass for me. Um, he's got decent size at 6'3", and if he does, he has a good shot at winning. Um, you know, as the as the um, Atlantic is going to be a very you know high powered division, uh, but his aggression is just too high, and I think there's better options. So this one would be a pass for me. If you pack him, sell him. Next, we've got Matthew Kachuk, another hard sell for me. Uh, he needs to score a bunch of goals to get his speed up to anything decent. Um, in the higher ranges, 90 overall at this stage in the game where there's 99s and whatnot. Uh, just not really going to cut it. Uh, there, there's better there's better cards, essentially. Um, it is shot as well. Depends what, um, what a uh, skills competition he's involved in. But he would need a bunch of goals to kind of make this card worth it. This would be a sell for me. Eric Stahl. Now, this one is a little bit interesting because he is on the slower end. He's a little bit faster than the Kachuk, but he's 6'4", 209. Already comes with 89 face-off. If he can get a couple goals, maybe two, this is a pretty, pretty decent card just because of his size. Um, so he might not be – he might be a pretty cheap option um, if he's under 100K. This isn't a bad one, in my opinion, just because I think he's got the 2 to X as well, so his speed synergy will go up, or his speed will go up with the X synergy activated, uh, and not to mention he's just big, so it's that's not a bad, this isn't a bad card at all. Moving on to page number 2, we'll go with uh, Jacob Slavin, 6'3", 205, left-handed, Pretty good card to start out with, 94 skating across the board. Slap shot's only 87 and 81, uh, so that is a little bit lower, but the shot power is, you know, half decent. Um, don't know what skills competition he's going to be in, um, but again, this would be 
Um, not a terrible card to have. Again, this is any of these cards that I'm going to say that you you wouldn't mind grabbing. Let's just pretend we're we're taking them at face value if they don't upgrade. Okay, so say they they don't upgrade at all. This isn't this is what you this is the risk you're running. Okay, so if you spend like if we go and take a look at Jacob Slavin real quick as far as what he's going for, are you willing to spend you know a hundred k? on an, an 88 left defenseman with 94 skating and 87 slap shot power. I mean, it's not terrible, and it, he has a good chance of, you know, at least being on the winning team as the Metro is not bad either, uh, which would bump him up or at least give him a better synergy. But um, at 100, under 100K, it's not bad. It's not bad. After him, we've got the 88 Tyler Sagan. Uh, Right-handed, it's a little bit more rare. 90 face-off, which isn't bad at all. And he's got good skating plus the X synergy. So his skating's already at an endgame spot. Then his shot's at 90 overall, hands all at 90. This is a really good card right out of the gate. If he can put some goals in, which it would, would it surprise anyone if Tyler Sagan scored a bunch or a few in the All-Star game, um, this isn't a bad card at all to invest in. And if we take a look real quick at it as far as what he's going for, uh yeah it's like 150 that's not bad at all i mean 150 let's just pretend like it, that, say this is what he's stuck at you're not really stuck with a terrible card for 150k um i would definitely put him on one of the higher uh, higher spots as, as cards i would go after um early in the event After him, we've got Mark Shifley, criminally underrated in this game just because he's so big, right-handed, and he always has decent stats, but for whatever reason, he's just always so cheap. Almost like Tyler Sagan, completely right here. He's got 94 skating across the board, 2 to X, shot just under 90, hands a little bit less. So this is like a worse version of him, obviously, um, but not terrible again. Uh, but I'm not sure how much he would score, and it would depend on the event that he does. Last year, he did the puck control event, but I think the puck control event isn't coming back, and he didn't do very well in it, so uh, something to keep in mind. Then we've got uh, Calgary's David Riddick. Um, I would probably buy him regardless. So six foot four, two oh two, under eighty aggression is the play. Guys, you have to understand under under 80 aggression has been what is consensus just been the best types of goaltenders released in NHL 20, and you can get him right now for about 50k almost. Uh, great buy if the Pacific Division somehow wins, um, then you're you're laughing because you've got a good goaltender for super cheap and uh, definitely worth 50k. Next, we've got St. Louis's Alex Petrangelo, another good card just based on size alone, six foot three, two ten, right-handed. Skating's a little slow. Slap shot power at ninety. It again, it depends on what uh, what he's going to play in as far as uh, skills competition, because I don't really think he would threaten for anything. Um, but if he would need some goal, or he would need a goal or two, or just to to. Yeah, he would, he would really just need a goal. His speed's a little slow at this point. There are Right defensemen are rare, um, but he would just because his speed is a little bit lower and his slap shot accuracy is a mess. Um, so that, that's a little tough. This would just be a pass for me. I think he's going to go for a lot just because based on his size, but I think there are better options than what you're going to pay for him. Next, we've got Elias Pettersson, 6'2", 176. Again, a lot of people don't like Elias Pettersson cards. Some people love him, just the way he plays because he is so slender and really tall. A really good shot right out of the gate. Then he's got 92 speed uh, acceleration and 96 agility. Uh, great hands with 93 deking. Um, I would be stunned if he doesn't score a few. So uh, just based on what the auction house, again, I'm doing PlayStation right now. Just based on the auction house, you know, looking at around 200 k that's a steep price for an 88 if he stays like this. I would be stunned if he does, though. Um, as far as as far as far um, not scoring goals, it would be crazy to think that he uh, he doesn't score in the event, which would mean uh, he's going to go up. He did the fastest skater competition as well last year. Um, only became about you know, 0.5 of a second away from winning, but I'm assuming that's what he's going to do again. So if he wins, imagine he wins that, then you're, then you're laughing. After him, we've got David Perron, six foot two hundred. So nothing crazy in size, but he does have X two to X, and then ninety five speed, acceleration, agility, and balance. Those are great right off the board. Then he's got middle of the pack shooting, eighty five accuracy, eighty eighty eight um, power, hand stats all under ninety. So he's just kind of a ho hum card. Um, nothing really impressive there, and I don't think he's going to threaten for a lot. So I'd probably pass on him. 
And then we've got David Pasternak, who won, who was probably one of the most sought after um, cards last year. The All Star Game won as his he won the um, accuracy shooting by a full second and a half, and uh, he boosted his wrist shot accuracy and power to 99. If that happens again, this is a fantastic card because his speed, acceleration, agility is already end game, and if you have SP, it's even better. Um, this is definitely a card I would go after, but I'm going to assume that just like last year, his card is going to shoot up into really expensive, like 230. If he got down to 200, I would probably pull the trigger on him because even at 200, his speed and shot isn't going to cost you a ton, and you could probably sell back at least and at least get back like 120k, maybe 100k for him. So it uh, wouldn't be a total, total loss if he doesn't win anything. He's probably going to score as well, so. After Pasternak, uh, we've got Artemi Panarin, uh, definitely going to be a fan favorite here. Great skating at 96 speed, acceleration, agility. Um, balance is a little low, which kind of sucks because he is really small. This is definitely a card for people that just go up and down the ice and sprint. They, the people that control the puck, I would not go after him at all. Uh, shot is really good, so he's in a prime position to go up a few spots as far as um, goals, and if he does, then you're you're in really good shape here because he only needs two, and he'd have 98 skating, and he'd have well over 90 shooting. So, uh, if you are someone that goes end to end on the rush, this wouldn't be a bad card. But if you're someone who likes to control play, hard pass. From Vegas, we've got Max Pacioretty, good size at six two two zero six, low key one of the better cards. Uh, ninety five skating, uh, balance and or balance and endurance at ninety four, and then his shooting's just under ninety. Uh, his hand stats are a little you know a little mad, but if you look. And what he's going for in the auction now is 120, 115, you know, low, low 100s. This isn't bad at all. I mean, he is definitely has the potential to score in the game um, just because, you know, he is a decent goal scorer. But uh, we don't know what he would do as far as the uh, skills competition goes. And once we find that out, we might know a little bit more of his odds at increasing even more. But this isn't a bad card at all, again, um, just based on size, speed, and shot. So next up, we've got TJ Oshie. Uh, again, great speed at 97 across the board, and then shooting again is a little low, 86 in the middle there. Uh, he would need to score or do well in a um, in an event, but uh, I I personally don't think it's worth the risk as um, he just you know it's just 130k is the cheapest one up. I would pass on him. Just again, it's not it's not worth the risk there. Following him, we've got Ryan O'Reilly, 99 faceoff. Uh, probably are makes him worth it, to be honest with you. If you just, uh, I believe he scored last year. He ended up being one of the more uh, profitable uh, cards as well in the uh, in the All Star game, if I remember correctly. Uh, 90 skating or 90 speed acceleration, but has two to X. If you get SP on him, you're in even better shape. Shots mediocre as well, but he could be your fourth line center for the rest of the game if nothing happens at all. So this isn't a bad card to go grab either. Next, we've got Connor McDavid. So this card, uh, if we go and look at the auction house price, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize about Connor McDavid. See, 300. Like, I would never in a million years pay this price for him, and here's why. One, there's a ton of other Connor McDavid cards out there that are already great. The 93, the 95, the team of the year. Um, all of those cards are fantastic, and he is going to... 100% be in the fastest skater competition again. And if he is, he's really not increasing his speed at all. So you're wasting that, you know, potential win right there. You're going to waste that because if it boosts up to 99, it's like, okay, hey, sweet. You just went up plus two. Uh, his speed is his shot, however, is a mediocre because he's basically just a base card uh, at this stage in the game. So unless he scores like four or five goals, you're really left with, you know, overpayment. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, guys. If he comes out and does the fastest skater competition again, remember that when you factor in how much you're going to spend on him, I would hard pass on the Connor McDavid All-Star card. Following him, we've got Austin Matthews. Now, this would be a card... Man, the Matthews cards play so well. So 6 foot three, two sixteen. he's big. 94 skating isn't tragic. And then on just under 90 shooting... Uh, face off is at 87, so it's not, I don't think, good enough to be a center or at least in your first three or two lines. Uh, depends on the skills competition that he does. Um, 
last year he did the accuracy shooting and he was god awful at it so let's just we would have to just assume that it would be based on goals and he is definitely capable of scoring goals in this um if he scores two or three you're in great shape if he doesn't score any you're probably overpaying for him then we've got his teammate mitch marner uh same kind of thing he's smaller so he's even in worse worse spot because if he doesn't win an event um for shooting you know because his shots under 90 but then his speed's only 93 for someone of his size is as far as weight goes you really need him uh to be able to you know fly down those boards he's gonna need a couple goals which he's definitely capable of uh, but i would probably avoid mitch marner then we've got the ADA Jacob Markstrom. Uh, this is a buy 100%. So 100K for him right now. The 86 Swedish, Swedish version from the Winter National event is already one of the best goaltenders in the game. If he wins this event or wins the event this is like to save the streak and let's just say the Pacific wins, you might have one of the best goaltenders for the remainder of the game or for, for far down the road. This is a 100% buy if you're looking for a goaltender. Him and Riddish uh, definitely the main two. I would probably go Riddick uh, just because he's half the price, uh, but I know personally that the Markstrom card plays great, but I also told you guys to get Christmas Rene, so what do I know about goaltenders? Following him, we've got Nathan McKinnon. Again, kind of falls into that um, that McDavid territory. So there are so many better options, or already great options of Nathan McKinnon cards. However, he is rare because he's really good right-handed. Already has great speed, and if his shot, if he he just needs a few goals, like if he can get a few goals, um, then you're in really good shape. But again, relying on goals is tough. Uh, because it's so random. Like it's three on three for only two, two, three games. So I mean. Um, it's very difficult to, you know, kind of um, envision that. Not to mention, I don't know what um, skill competition he's going to do. He might do fastest skater, uh, but who knows? Um, it depends on his price, but, I mean, I just think there's too many other good ones that you could go out and buy for a little bit more coins. So, like, 260 I would pass because if, if he ends up just staying at this, like, it's not out of the realm of possibility, uh, you've way overpaid for him. So I would pass on the All-Star McKinnon card. I would sell him. They've got Chris Letang. Chris Letang did pretty well in the accuracy shooting. He almost won it. He came second to Pasternak. And a 99 wrist shot accuracy and power from any position is fantastic. From defense, it's a little bit more obscure, but he's already got good skating. His slap shot's kind of mad, 79 accuracy. Um, so it's going to depend on that event. Um, but he is capable of scoring, but because there's so few right-handed defensemen, again, um, he's not terrible just to buy and hope for. At 100K, you're, you mean, you could do, you could do worse. 100K for this card isn't awful. I mean, it, it would suck, uh, but, uh, just imagine if it stayed at this price, he'd probably go for like 50K, so you're only really losing 50, so, um, this wouldn't be a bad investment at all. Following him, we've got Anze Kopitar. Another interesting one. 99 faceoff means that he's already worth his value. He's huge at 6'3", 224. Um, he's going for cheap at around 115K. I don't think he'll score or win an event, uh, but who knows? Um, for people that love to control play and like to really worry about faceoff, uh, this would be a really good card to have. And for around 100K, I would definitely buy Next, we've got Travis Konechny, a little bit smaller, but 96 skating out of the gate, 85 shooting, kind of met against he's going to need to do something, uh, which is kind of tough um, and hard to predict. I would just, I would avoid him. All right, on to the front page. We've got 88 Patrick Kane. Uh, this is a tough one because he's, uh, this card actually isn't bad at all. I mean, he's got 92 speed, but a 96 acceleration agility, but he has two to X, so Bumps up a speed with SP or even better. Slap shot, 92 accuracy, 87 power. Wrist shot, 93 accuracy, 87 power. Then his hands are all nuts at, you know, over 94, basically. Um, and his offensive awareness is 94. So this card is already fantastic in these stats that really matter for Hockey Ultimate Team. So, I mean, he's going for 200 right here. That's not bad. He, I would I would assume that he's probably going to get a goal or two. Uh, and even if he doesn't, 200K for this card... It, again, sucks because you're paying at the most, and he obviously isn't going to go for that if he stays at this, but not a bad card to invest in as he's probably going to score, but that body checking is rough. If you are, this is a, definitely for a player that likes to go end-to-end. -end. Following the Patrick Kane card, we've got Roman Yossi. 
Um, so he's already got a much better card in the Winter National event. Speed's 93. It's not awful. Accuracy and power for Slapshot is 80 and 89. Passing's an 89. It's, again, not terrible, nothing crazy, but, again, very, very tough uh, to guess if he's going to do anything. He was the premium pa- in the premium passer event. He did awful, and I don't think that's events there anymore. So uh, I would pass on Roman Yossi. Seth Jones, he was my heavy prediction last year. I remember I told people to go all in, and he just lost the hardest uh, shot by about two miles per hour. Uh, Right-handed, six for four, so he's already great. Speed at 93 for his size is okay. Uh, This is almost like a Brent Burns card. His shot is, again, he kind of needs... It depends how much he's going for because 88 and 82 for um, power and accuracy is kind of tough. But 100K, he won or he came did very well in the hardest skills or the hardest shot competition two years ago and came second last year. He could definitely win this event. And if Slapshot Power bumps up to 99, it makes him one of the best right defensemen in the game. 100K on him if you're looking for a defenseman to invest in, not a bad option at all. All right, we're getting almost there, folks. So we're at Christian Jari. This is just a hard pass. Not big enough. Aggression's 82. Just pass. Moving on, we've got Quinn Hughes. Smaller. 99 skating, though. Um, This is for someone that likes to break the puck out with the defenseman. Kind of like if you have an Eric Carlson card. He could score. I could see him being flashy enough, but we don't have any other info than that. I don't like small defensemen. I'd probably avoid this one. It depends how much he's going for. I wouldn't spend any more than 100 k on him, and he's going for 250 160 it looks like. Yeah, that's a hard pass for me. Just... And the speed's great, but I just don't like small defensemen. I think that in this game, the meta, um, it's going to be tough on you. 88, Jonathan Huberto, criminally underrated. 94 skating, though. 91 balance, 90 endurance. 87 shooting. And then the hand stats above 88. Very good. Um, it, again, it's going to depend on what he does in the competition, though. I wouldn't invest in him. Just too many variables. He would have to win a competition, and I don't want to bet on that. Then we've got Brayden Holpe, 84 aggression. You know what to do. Hard pass. Nico Heischer, 97 skating, so that's already good. Uh, high 80s shooting, deking is at 90, 88 hand-eye, 89 passing, and 89 puck control. Um, if he scores, that's not terrible. It, again, depends on how much he's going for. 100K, 100K, I mean, it seems like everyone's going for about 100K. Um, and if you're going to invest in someone, at least make them fast. So 97 this isn't bad for 100k. I don't think he's going to do much, but you're not going to lose much on your investment if he doesn't do anything. Following Heischer, we've got my boy Tomash Hurdle, uh, six foot two two twenty. He's big, good skating for. I mean, decent skating for this event. Ninety four speed, acceleration, agility is ninety five, balance is ninety one, endurance is ninety one, shooting just under ninety, hand stats just under ninety, face offs at ninety. So. Uh, this isn't a bad card at all, just based on size, face-off, um, then decent shot and speed. If he can score, and I have a feeling he's going to be in, um, I would guess he's in a breakaway competition, just because he's amazing with the puck. So we'll have to see how that plays out. I could see him scoring a goal or two. I just watch him all the time. He loves you know, showing off, so I could, I could see that. Uh, again, let's take a look at his price. We are looking at 100K. Mm, yeah, not terrible. It's not a bad price. Again, just like Nico Hirscher, I'd rather have Hurdle just because of his size and uh, face-off and all that. So, Connor Hellebuck. This one's not bad either. 6'4", 81 aggression. A little bit more expensive, though. Um, this is a maybe. I probably would... If you're going to go with a goaltender, I would rather have Markstrom or Riddick, though. So, I would I would sell Connor. Victor Hedman, 6'6", 220, 90 skating. This is a hard pass for me. Um, he would have to win an event. Don't know what event he would play in, um, and uh, he's probably not going to score. So uh, there's far better Hedman cards. Don't overpay for this one in case something happens. You got Mark Giordano, same exact thing. Low skating, shots mediocre, doesn't do enough. The hard pass, don't, don't want to risk it. 88 Eichel, we've got 95 skating basically, and then 88 shooting, 90 deking hand eye, 6 foot 2, 203, not bad, you gotta think he's probably gonna score, um, just again, flashy, he was in the fastest skater competition, and he came second to uh, Connor McDavid, so if he were to win that, you're in really good shape, but uh, he probably won't, because Connor McDavid, um, so be careful on this one, don't go over 100k. 
Following him, we've got Anthony Duclair. 99 skating or speed, agility, and acceleration. So that already makes him pretty much worth it. If we go and look at the auction house. 130 that's man these are the players that always show out in the all-star game so i mean i wouldn't sleep he's probably not going to win a competition obviously but who knows he might score a goal or two i mean if he scores two goals you're at just under 90 shooting um pretty good investment if he drops to 100k following him we've got leon dreisaitl again this one's a hard pass for me just too low of skating is going to rely on too many upgrades to be a good card and um yeah pass for me well and we've got john carlson so he's big speed's not terrible and he did win harder shot and his shot will go up quite a bit this is a pretty good investment but i have a feeling his price is going to be expensive uh 150 140 i mean he's probably he's not going to be the favorite this year even though he won harder shot last year because shea weber's in it but if he does win it Bumps up to 99. That's pretty impressive. And um, he's probably not going to score. So 93. But he is 6 for 3, 218 on the back end. Not a bad card if you can get him for like 125 ish. Almost at the end, guys. We've got Jordan Biddington. Easy. Uh, hard pass. Just not tall enough. Tyler Batsuzzi. So kind of more obscure one from the Red Wings. Decent skating. Shots meh. Uh, hard pass for me just because. He's probably going to score four goals or something stupid, but he's not going to be a favorite to win an event. It's a, too much of a risk to for probably no return. Matthew Barzal, really good speed, agility, and acceleration at 95. Shot kind of in that same area. But three on three, he's like just a mastermind. I would think he goes up a couple and just two goals even, 97 skating and then 89 shooting. Uh, probably pretty good because he's got right-handed shot as well this is probably a decent card if you were to pack him and then freddie anderson i would personally sell he's six foot four does have decent aggression at 82 i don't like to do anything over 80 uh but a good chance to win just based on you know the atlantic being a really strong division uh but uh yeah i would probably probably pass on him again there are just better options guys so that was really long, guys. I apologize, but that is all of the All-Star cards and my thoughts on them. I will have a video out later uh, in the week when they announce the rosters for the skills competition. Uh, I really want to go over that as just, you know, to show you guys um, what you could do with them and who I think will win. I think that there there is money to be made here. You just got to, you know, you just got to find it. Uh, as far as sets go, if we go to the All-Star game sets, um, so it's the same thing, 50 players for an untradeable, and then 33% never do these guys, never do these, it's just it's such a waste. A random all-star game item set, not terrible, if you were to trade in nine, you're going to get someone half decent, um, then you can do these choice ones. I personally would stay away from all these sets. The coins are going for cheap enough, or the players are going for cheap enough that if you really want to invest in a player, you can just go and do that. But watch for my video, guys. I will release it the day of I find out. I release videos every day on who is playing each skill, skill competition, which then could impact how much they go for, and I'll have that video for you right away. So, guys, thank you for watching if you're still here. And, uh, yeah, guys, if you have any questions, be sure to join my Discord. Easiest way to do it, and have a good one, guys.